Growing up exploring Alaska's ever-changing landscape inspires a lifetime of learning. That's why Alaska 529 is a proud sponsor of the Alaska Sea Life Center and focused on helping families take small steps now for their child's future education. To learn about the Alaska 529 plan, its investment objectives, risks, and costs, carefully read the plan disclosure document available at alaska529plan.com. Alaska 529. Save in Alaska. Study anywhere. Everyone gather round, it's the time of day for Virgin Small Fry School. We can hardly wait. Make new ocean friends connect with old pals too. Let's learn about the sea. There's so much to do. La la small fry. La la small fry. La la small fry. La la small fry. Learn and have fun. Cool creatures to meet. It's virtual small fry school. Go ahead and grab a seat. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Virtual Small Fry School here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. My name is Rebecca, and I'm so happy that you're here with us today again. Uh, we will be hosting these live every Tuesday at 11 a.m. Alaska time uh, right here on YouTube. If you have any questions today, feel free to text that number in the description below. And then today's activity, we're going to be making our own uh, food chain. So if you haven't downloaded and printed um, our material today, you can do that. The links are also in the description below. Um, and I have my friends uh, Holly, who you've already met, our friends Holly and Alex. And we have two other friends with us today. They're Taylor and Isabella. And so we're wearing masks to stay safe. Last week, we talked about plankton. And we made our own plankton. And one of our friends <laughs> made uh, share photos of the plankton that they made with us. Whoa, look at that, so cool. Thank you so much for sharing. I really appreciated that and tell if you really liked them. Thank you. So today, we are gonna talk about food. Do you like food? Oh, I love food. What's your favorite? I really like cheese. But we've been talking a lot about food and what it does for us. It provides so much nutrients for us to grow. And it also gives us energy to do things like jump. We can also run. And we can even pretend to be sea stars. So I want you to pretend to be a sea star with me. Ready? So take your arms out. Spread out your legs and stick to a rock or the wall. Awesome. Good job, everybody. So like I said, I really like cheese. And the cheese that I buy at the grocery store is usually made out of uh, from cows, the milk produced from cows. But there are other cheeses nowadays. So this is our cow friend. What color is the cow? It's black and white. Yeah. What do cows eat? Do you know? They eat grass. You're doing so good today. What color is the grass? It's green, yeah. And do you remember? Grass is a plant. Do you remember how it makes its food? From the sun, oh my goodness. The sun gives the grass energy to produce its own food. So. The sun, the sun's energy gives food or makes the energy for the plant to use and make food. And then when the cow eats the grass, it gets energy to do things. And then that uh, milk that we get from the cows can be made into different things like cheese that we can put on our pizza and enjoy. This is called a food chain. And in a food chain, the organisms are connected by what they eat. And just like a chain, the organisms in a food chain are connected. And the arrows point to the organism that is getting the energy. So let's take a look at our food chain again. So we can see that the arrow is pointing to the grass 
because the grass gets the energy from the sun. The arrow points to the cow because the cow gets energy from the grass when it eats it. And then the arrow is pointing to the person because the person gets energy when they eat the cheese that was produced from the cow. There are so many food chains here um, in the world. And I, I want to show you one that we have here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. So this is a fish that we have here. It's called the pollock. Isn't it really cool? Ooh, look at how pretty that is. And that's our friend Holly. She's here with us today, and she's feeding the pollocks. And they get so happy and so excited when they eat the food. So Holly was feeding them krill. Can you say krill? Krill. So the, that's the krill. And krill looks like tiny shrimp. And it's a zooplankton. And the krill eat the phytoplankton that we learned about last week. Wow, and the phytoplankton, if you remember, they make their food by using this energy from the sun. So that itself is its own food chain. So there are more food chains even out in the ocean, and I wanna show you the kelp forest food chain, one of those. So this is a kelp forest, and there are many animals that call the kelp forest a home. This is a sea otter, and sea otters live in the kelp forest, and they dive down for looking for food. Oh, it's so cute. See, it's looking for food. Where do you go look for your food? I look in my fridge. Wow, it's really looking. Can't find anything. But when sea otter moms have pups, they teach their pups or their babies to look for food as well. So you can see they have a pup with them and they're diving in the kelp forest looking. Mom teaches their pup how to look for food and how to eat it. One of their favorite foods is the sea urchin. And sea urchins have teeth, you can see them there. They have five. Mmm, so cool. And sea urchins love to eat the kelp. So we hear, we see here lots of sea urchins that ate the kelp. And the kelp is an algae and it's like a plant and it makes its own food by using the energy from the sunlight. So we're gonna start with our activity today. These are, are the PDFs that we linked that you can print and download. Um, this is our food chain animals that we're gonna be using. And there are two. One of them is easier to cut, and the other one is a little more difficult. So you choose what is best for you. I'm gonna choose this one today. So we are going to color our ocean food chain animals. So we have kelp and we have sea urchins, and we have the otters. I have my color pencils right here, so I'm gonna use the color brown to color my sea otter. And you can do that as well at home. So sea otters have really thick fur to keep them warm because they live in the ocean, and the ocean can be a little cold sometimes. And again, friends, I wanna remind you, if you have any questions today, go ahead and text that number in the description below.
Sea otters also have whiskers to help them look for food as well. And they carry a special rock with them sometimes to help them open different foods like clams. So now I'm gonna use um, a marker to paint or to color in my sea urchin. There are different colors of sea urchins. They're not always purple. I'm gonna use purple, but we have red sea urchins and we have green sea urchins here at the Alaska Sea Life Center. I've also seen black sea urchins, not here, but in other parts of the world. And sea urchins have these spines that help them get food and also sense their environment. What body part do we have to help us sense our environment? We, we have many different body parts and lots of senses to help us. But we use our fingers to get our food, right? So friends, you can go ahead and get creative with your coloring. I really like how I'm doing it, but I'm gonna leave that white just because sometimes it can be a little lighter color down there, closer to their um, skeleton. Then I'm gonna, um, this is our kelp. I'm gonna color it green, but there are also uh, brown algaes out there so and red algaes out there. And they all they all use the sun's energy to make their own food. Sorry, friends, I was so focused on my color and completely forgot what I was saying. Do you have a favorite animal? Mine is the whale. During the week, you can learn more about your favorite animal, what they like to eat, what their food likes to eat, and then what the food of their food likes to eat, and see where that food chain goes. And you can figure out the food chain for many different animals. Great. So now I'm gonna take my scissors and I'm gonna cut around on the dotted or dashed lines. And you can do that yourself or if you need some help, you can um, use the help of an adult around you or next to you to help you out, okay? So I'm gonna gently and carefully cut around the kelp. Rebecca, we have a question from Naomi from Eagle River. Yeah, we have a question. Why do the urchins have hard spikes? Why do the sea urchins have hard spikes? So those are called spines. Thank you, Naomi, for your question. Um, and they have hard spines to help them protect themselves because they do have predators like the sea otter. And so they need to protect themselves. Great question. Somebody is wondering where we find the PDF papers. So you can find the PDF papers in the description uh, below. Um, there, the links to the PDFs are there. They're also on the Alaska Sea Life Center website. How's your cutting coming along? So good, yay. And we have one more, the sea otter. Elijah wanted to share that their favorite animal at the center is the oyster catcher, and Naomi likes seabirds. <gasps> so do we know what those animals like to eat? Yeah, Holly, you can answer those questions too because Holly really likes birds. 
Yes, the oyster catchers and most of our seabirds really like a mixed group of animals to eat. We feed them all sorts of little fish, fish like capelin, herring. We also feed them really fun mollusks like mussels. We also feed them krill, like the pollock was eating earlier. And our sea ducks like pellets. So we give them fancy sea duck pellets. Wow, that sounds delicious. And so you see, friends, the animals like to eat many different things, just like we also eat a lot of different things. I don't always eat cheese, I promise. I like vegetables too and other things. So you can go ahead and color this as well. I'm going to um, do that later, but for now, we're going to put our food chain together. So where does the energy go? Well, we know that the sea urchin likes to eat the kelp and sea otters like to eat the sea urchins. And remember, the arrows point to where the energy is going. So when the sea otter eats sea urchins, who's getting the energy? The sea otter, that's right. So the arrow is pointing to the sea otter because it gets the energy when it eats sea urchins. We're gonna put that in the middle. And sea urchins really love kelp. And so they get energy when they eat kelp. So it's blocking the arrow a little, but they get energy when they eat kelp. So I'm gonna take my glue now, and you can take your glue and glue it on your other paper so that we can make our food chain. If you don't have glue, you can use tape. And also, if you cannot download these um, and print them out, you can use just regular paper and draw them out yourself or with the help of your adult, and then you can cut them out and glue them on another paper. And then you can get a little more creative and draw it, color it in yourself. So there are options out there. Olga from Chugiak had a question, and it was, can you talk about what sea otters eat? I'm guessing besides sea urchins. Yeah, thank you for the question. Um, so sea otters uh, like to eat clams, sometimes sea worms. Um, they love crabs too, and they tend to specialize um, usually in one type of food and then they teach that to their pups. But um, it depends on the sea otter, you know, like sometimes people just don't really like cheese and others do, like myself. Um, so sea otters are the, a little bit like the same. They sometimes, they really like sea urchins and so that's really all they will eat. But when there are no sea urchins, they'll go for other foods like crabs, sometimes worms that are found in the sand, um, clams, things like that. Cool. Okay, friends, I'm gonna color my fish. Do, do, do. Maybe a little pink. Thank you for all these questions. I really like them, they're great questions. Here's another great question by Elijah from Eagle River. Is there anything that eats sea otters? Yeah. Great question. Is there anything that eats sea otters? Um, yes, so killer whales sometimes um, eat sea otters. They've been seen hunting sea otters. Um, sharks sometimes as well like to eat sea otters. And then a long time ago, I mentioned that sea, otter, sea otters have a really nice thick fur to help keep them warm. Um, humans also hunted them for their fur to keep us warm but then that um, didn't really help their population. 
Thankfully, though, now humans are studying sea otters, and we protected them so that um, their population can come back. Okay, one last thing I'm going to do, friends. I'm going to color my sea stars red. And if you have any more questions, go ahead and send them in. You can also send in photos of your food chain. I'd love to see those. And then I'll um, share them in next week's episode so that all our other friends can see what you've created. I'm really interested to see as well. All righty, friends. Another question, where are humans in the food chain? Yeah, where are humans in the food chain? So humans are usually at the top of the food chain. The very top of the food chain is um, an organism that doesn't have any predators, and so humans are usually at the top. Um, yeah, great question. All righty, friends, thank you so much for your questions um, and for doing this activity with me. Stick around for story time. We are going to be reading Who Eats What and learn more about food chains and food webs. And next week's episode is on fish. So we're going to be learning about fish and their body parts. And I'll see you next week, OK? Bye. Who Eats What? Food Chains and Food Webs by Patricia Lauber, illustrated by Holly Keller. A caterpillar is eating a leaf on an apple tree. Later, the caterpillar is spotted by a wren. It becomes part of the wren's dinner. Still later, the wren is eat eaten by a hawk. Leaf, caterpillar, wren, and hawk are all linked. Together, they form a food chain. Each is a link in the chain. The hawk is the top of the food chain because no other animal attacks or eats hawks. The animal at the top of a food chain is always the last eater, the one nobody else eats. Suppose you eat an apple off the tree. That makes you part of a short food chain. The apple and you. You are the top of the food chain. What color is the apple? It's red. Or suppose you drink a glass of milk. Now you are the top of a slightly longer food chain. The milk came from a cow and the cow ate grass. So this chain is grass, cow, you. Every time you eat a meal, you become the top of several food chains. You can draw a picture to show them. If you had a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, a glass of milk, and an apple, the picture might look like this. Food is the fuel our bodies need. Food keeps us alive. It gives us the energy we need to grow, move, and do many other things. The same thing is true for caterpillars, wrens, hawks, for all animals. All must find or catch the foods they need. When you draw a food chain, you are drawing a flow of energy. The arrows show its path. There are many, many food chains, more than anyone can count, but in one way, they are all alike. All food chains begin with green plants. Green plants 
are the only living things that can make their own food. They are the only living things that do not need to eat something else. Green plants take energy from sunlight. They use it to make food out of water and air. All animals depend on green plants for food, even animals that don't eat plants. Hawks, for example, do not eat green plants. But the hawk ate the wren that ate the caterpillar that ate the leaf of a green plant. And so the hawk is linked to the green plants through the food chain. It needs the plants as much as the caterpillar does. The leaf is inside the hawk. Take a walk and look around. You will see parts of many food chains. Look at the leaves and flowers of plants. Look at the bark of trees. Look at fruits, nuts, and seeds that have fallen to the ground. What animals are eating them? You might see a grasshopper eating a blade of grass. You may not see another animal eating the grasshopper, but you can find out which animals eat grasshoppers by going to the library. You can read up on grasshoppers and any other animal you've seen. You can draw food chains. Your drawings will show that one plant may be the start of several food chains. The leaves of an oak tree may be food for caterpillars. Beetles may bore into the tree's trunk. Acorns are food for squirrels, chipmunks, blue jays, and deer. The drawings will also show that most animals are part of several food chains. Chipmunks, for example, eat many foods. They eat nuts, seeds, berries, buds. They may also eat insects, snails, and other small animals. And chipmunks themselves are eaten by weasels, bobcats, foxes, coyotes, hawks. These animals may also eat some of the things chipmunks eat. Try drawing some of these food chains on one page. You will have arrows branching in all directions. Now you have drawn a food web. Food webs are made up of many food chains. Whoa. On land, most food chains are short. But scientists still have much to learn about them. They have even more to learn about food chains in the seas. These chains are long. They are also hard to study because most of the plants and animals live underwater. So we have tiny plankton, a striped anchovy that eats the plankton. We have an Atlantic mackerel that then eats the anchovy. We have a dog snapper that eats the mackerel. And then a great barracuda that eats the dog snapper. So the energy, the arrows tell us where the energy is going. In the water, as on the land, food chains begin with green plants. Some of the plants are tiny. You need a microscope to see them. Some are bigger. 
The green plants are food for many tiny creatures, which become food for bigger creatures. Small fish are eaten by bigger fish, which are eaten by still bigger fish, which are eaten by even bigger fish. Whoa. This algae is called sea lettuce. Does it look like the lettuce that you eat? Kind of does. The biggest, such as tuna, are at the tops of food chains, unless they are caught by humans. Then one of them may turn up in your tuna fish sandwich. Both the tuna and you are part of a food chain that began with a tiny green plant. Food chains are found wherever life is found. The far south of the world, Antarctica, is icy and bitterly cold for much of the year. But in summer, its seas come alive. The water is rich with tiny green plants. They are fed on by tiny animals and these are fed on by small animals such as krill, which look like shrimp. All these animals and plants are food for bigger animals, such as fish and squid. Many other animals come to feast in these waters. There are seals, whales, and dolphins. There are many seabirds, among them penguins. All the animals are linked to the tiny green plants. This is a blue whale. Do you know what animal this is? That's a penguin, you're right. It's an Adeli penguin. Killer whale and crab eater seals. We have a cape pigeon, and a petrel. The drawing shows a web of food chains at the far south of the world. The arrows show who eats what. Follow the arrows and find the animals that feed on krill. One of them is the blue whale, the biggest animal on earth. Find the animals that eat animals that eat krill. Sometimes people talk about catching krill for human food. But what would happen to the food web if fishermen took huge catches of krill each year? To find out, look at the drawing again. Humans often make changes in food chains and webs. Then they find that one change causes other changes. That was what happened when hunters killed nearly all the Pacific sea otters. Hmm. Let's find out who eats krill. Looks like seabirds might eat krill. The penguins. The blue whale. The crab eater seal the leopard seal, fish. Whoa, it's a lot of animals. The otters lived off the west coast of North America. They lived in beds of giant seaweed called kelp. Every year, thousands of otters were killed for their fur. By the early 1900s, almost none were left. But as the otters disappeared, so did beds of kelp. And so did eagles, harbor seals, and fish. What happened? The answer lay in the kelp. Kelp is the green plant at the start of many food chains. It is eaten by tiny animals that are eaten by bigger animals that are eaten by fish. The fish are food for eagles and seals as well as people. 
Kelp is also eaten by spiny animals called sea urchins. In eating, they may cut off stems at the seafloor. The kelp then floats away. Sea urchins are one of the foods otters like best. But when hunters kill the otters, there was no one to eat the urchins. The urchins destroyed the kelp beds. Once the hunting stopped, the otters made a comeback. They ate sea urchins and the kelp began to do well. When the kelp did well, the fish came back and so did the eagles, seals, and fishermen. Oh, what animal is this? It's a sea star. All over the world, green plants and animals are linked in food chains that branch into food webs. A change in one link is felt up and down that chain. It is felt through the whole web. And that's one good reason to take care of the earth, to take care of its plants and animals. When we help them, we also help ourselves. We too are part of many food webs. The end.